Hey everybody, welcome to Valley Kids Weekend Programming. My name is Jacob King. I am so glad to have you guys joining us today. We're gonna to start off with some worship time. Then we'll have our 4 5K lesson, as well as our first through fifth grade lesson. I hope you guys are excited to join us. When we sing the song, I will sing, we say, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. It goes pretty fast. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make no open your face. All generations I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever With my mouth I will make no open your faithfulness to all generations oh, oh, oh. With my mouth I will make no open your faithfulness to all with my mouth, I will make no own your faithfulness to all generations. Oh, 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 oh. with my mouth, I will make no own your faithfulness to all generations. To all generations. For the song Light Shine, we say, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people whoosh, light a lamp. You gotta make the good noise. Whoosh, light a lamp or put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light. They put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Let your light shine before others that they can see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You are the light of the world Town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. The 
same way. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Be for others that they may see your good deeds. See your good deeds. And glorify your Father in heaven. Light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Friends, I'm Jenna, and I'm so glad to be here. Miss Julie and Mr. Howie will be back soon, but today I get to celebrate and praise God with you. I am so excited. Last week, did you get your shakers out in your hands like this? I need everyone to hold their hands up and shake them. When I say God is good, I can praise God because God is good. I want you to have your hands up and we say God is good. Can you do it? Awesome. Okay, well, let's start with our story today. Did you know this bag was here? Let's see what's inside it. A frog? And a flower? Hmm, I wonder what these are about. Oh, I know. Do you remember the first week of November when we talked about how God made all things? He made plants and flowers and grass and trees and animals and the sun and stars and the sky. God made all things. He made things as gifts to us. Wow, God is good. Are you ready? I can praise God because God is good. Wow, that was fun, thanks. Oh, I wanna know what's under here. Do you wanna know what's under this towel? Let's look. It's a cake, I love cake. And an orange. God gave us food to eat, he gave us cake and fruits and vegetables and noodles and all sorts of good food for us. Hmm. If you had a choice between cake and orange or buttery noodles, what would you eat? Wow, those are all good choices. I'd have to say the cake. Well, God gave us food because God is good. I can praise God because God is good. Great job. Well, what do we have here? What's next on our table? Oh, this is a picture of my family. I don't know if you can see them. It's got all my girls, my husband. God gave us all families. He gave us all different families to love us. He gave people to love us because God cares about us. God is good. I can praise God because God is good. Great job. Okay, looks like we have one more here. Oh. There are lots of little people in here. All sorts of people. God gave us people to help us. Let's see. God gave us, he gave us firemen to help us if something happens to our house or if we get in an accident, they come and help us. God gave us friends to share with. Oh, do you think she would share her ice cream cone? I bet she would. God gave us neighbors to help us. 
Have you ever seen a neighbor maybe shovel someone's driveway in the snow? God gave us people to help us as a gift. That is so awesome, God is good. I can praise God because God is good. That's right, God is good. And we can praise God as a way to thank Him. God made all these things for us. He made family and friends and people to help us. God is good. I can praise God because God is good. Let's do it one more time really loud. I can praise God because God is good. Great job, God is good. We are so lucky with all the blessings God has given us. Let's talk to him now. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so good. Thank you for all the things they've given us, whether it's the grass and the trees and animals, food, our family, friends, people to help us. Lord, you provide for us daily and we thank you. Thank you for being so good. In your name we pray, amen. Wow, God is good. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, hold your hands up and shake them. Great job. Well, Julie and Howie might be back next week, but if not, I hope to see you soon. Bye. We have so many different holidays and traditions that we like to celebrate. Some families and some cultures around the world celebrate things differently, but we all have things that we really like to cheer and get excited about. One thing that I know a lot of us like to celebrate is Christmas. Christmas is a time where we give gifts and we remember that the greatest gift of all, Jesus, was given to us. We celebrate the 4th of July, Independence Day, America, America, and we get our red, white, and blue and we see some fireworks. We get excited about those things. We even celebrate things that are just for us, like our birthdays, a holiday just for you. Well, in the Bible times, the Jewish people, God's people, the Israelites, celebrated something called the Passover. And the Passover is something that happened a long, long time ago with Moses and the Israelites in Egypt. You see, when God's chosen people, the Israelites, were taken as slaves in Egypt, he had a plan to help them escape. He had a plan to set them free. And he wanted to use Moses to make that plan happen. And Moses went up to Pharaoh, the king of all Egypt, and he said, let God's people go. But Pharaoh said, not going to happen. So different plagues were happening, different wild, crazy things happened that were completely true so that God would show his power. One thing that happened is that all the water pff, ugh, turned to blood and the rivers, whether they already had it in a jar or a glass at their house, all of the water turned to blood. But Pharaoh, nope, not letting the people go. Giant frogs, so many frogs were jumping all around. <coughs> Probably not squeaking, but there were frogs everywhere driving people crazy. You know, I think frogs are great, but when I squish them every time I step somewhere, <coughs> oh, that would be a little bit too crunchy for my liking. Ugh! Oh, but Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go. Different kinds of bugs, giant bugs. Oh! were flying all around being so pesky and annoying. Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. All the Egyptians' animals died. But Pharaoh still wouldn't let God's people go. It was completely dark in the middle of the day. But Pharaoh wouldn't let God's people go. Other plagues happened too, but the last one, the tenth one that finally made Pharaoh let God's people go was called the Passover. God said to Moses, he said, tonight, every firstborn son in Egypt and every firstborn of the Israelites is going to die unless you take a lamb and you kill it and you put its blood on your doorposts. And Moses heard that 
and he trusted God and he told the people. And so all of them, they took the blood of a lamb and painted it on their doorpost so that when the angel of death came by their homes, the Israelites were safe. But Pharaoh, the Egyptians, they didn't trust in this. They didn't hear about it. And so Pharaoh and the people of Israel woke up heartbroken and that their firstborn sons had died. And they said to Moses and the Israelites, go, leave, you can be free. And so the Israelite people for years and years and years after the original Passover happened because the angel of death passed over their house if it was covered and protected by that blood of a lamb. And so they celebrated the Passover by eating the exact same foods that the Israelites did in Egypt. Well, years later, Jesus was with his disciples and they were celebrating the Passover dinner, but he wanted them to celebrate something else. He wanted them to celebrate what he was about to do for them. And so Jesus took some bread and he took a cup of wine and he showed the disciples, he celebrated with them the first communion. He broke off pieces of the bread and gave it to them to eat. He gave them drinks from the cup, poured out for them. He talked about how this bread represents his body that was going to be broken for them. That cup of wine, that drink represented his blood that was going to be poured out on the cross so that they can have forgiveness. And so they ate it, they drank, they, they might have been a little bit confused, but that first communion that happened is something that is passed on so that now children of God, Christians, we can celebrate what Jesus has done. When we're eating this bread and when we're drinking our juice or what we have, we aren't thinking like, is this actually Jesus in here? No, it's just a symbol. It represents what he did for us. When we eat that bread, we want to remember that we want our lives to be filled with Jesus. Just like his body, how he was whipped, he was hurt. He was hung on that cross. His body was broken for us. And we want to be filled with his love. We want to be thankful and show people the kindness that he gives us. That drink, that's to remember the blood that was poured out for us because he loves you. Because he loves me. And we want to celebrate that and say, you know, I trust in Jesus and what he's done. Taking communion is a special thing. And that's something that if you haven't yet, you can talk to your parents about it. Because we want to know that it's a symbol that helps show us how we can be closer to Jesus. It's something that we can do to show our love for him. The Israelites, the Jewish people celebrated Passover. They celebrated that God protected them in Egypt. From all those plagues, from their firstborn sons being killed, God protected them. And we need to know that Jesus, he saves us. Just like the blood of a lamb was up on the door to keep the Israelites safe, Jesus' blood keeps us safe from eternal separation from God. If we trust in him, if we believe in him, ask for his forgiveness, it's there for us. And you and me, we can celebrate today. We can take communion and we can remember what Jesus did for us and continue to celebrate and thank God for what he has done. For the song Straight Paths, we sing, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Stand. 
Thanks for joining us at Valley Kids Weekend Programming today. It's so awesome to have you guys with us. Right now is our time for the question of the week. This week's question is, what helps you remember to be grateful? I want you to stop, think about that, how you would answer it. Uh, ask your family, ask your friends what their answer to that question would be. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you guys next time.